what do you find in the action taken report objectionable and why? I, uh, it's not so much a question of uh, objectionable. It's the question is of what the action taken report ought to be, what its name suggests. Our difficulties, therefore, are both on substance and in matters of detail. In substance, the Joint Parliamentary Committee had addressed itself to a major scandal uh, of our times. And the issue involved was really about the accountability of the government to parliament, executive to the legislature, and secondly, of probity in public life. Thereafter, everything else is a matter of detail. The Joint Parliamentary Committee spent 18 months and established uh, as conclusions and recommendations a variety of uh, wrongs that had taken place in many departments of the government. In substance, therefore, if the government has not addressed correcting or punishing any of those wrongs, uh, any of the wrongdoers, then there was little point in instituting a JPC. What we are seeking, therefore, is not just a cosmetic alteration in the phraseology of the report. We are asking for a recognition by the government of the great wrong that gets committed, not simply to the JPC, but to the institution of parliament and in turn to the people if you do not address yourselves as government for these issues of very great importance in India's public life. Do you call it a systemic failure? I mean, that is what we understand that the JPC said that this was a systemic failure and we cannot indict any one person. Well, I think both are in error here. Your t both your observations are in error. Firstly, the JPC did not call it a failure of systems or a systemic failure. The government attempted to explain away all the failures by this rather convenient phraseology. We have not failed, the system has failed. Though, though in error, assuming for a moment that the system has failed. The system is not autonomous of individuals. The system is not autonomous of those that are responsible for running the system. So it's not a systemic failure. The JPC has not found it as a systemic failure. In fact, the JPC has established and reiterated the constitutional jurisprudence about ministerial responsibility. And it has categorically stated that if we in India do not recognize ministerial responsibility for what happens in the ministry, then I think we are going to pervert the entire arrangement of the Republic. But I think the JPC has exonerated the, uh, the finance minister. I don't think the JPC's purpose was either to exonerate or to find as guilty Minister X or Minister Y. The JPC's attempt, uh, as far as is humanly possible, and in such uh, bodies, was to, with the, uh, near total objectivity establish the wrong that has taken place and for that particular wrong who is responsible. For you therefore to come to the conclusion that the finance minister has been exonerated would be wrong. Uh, it, it is contrary to facts. It's contrary to the JPC's report. Uh, so in fact directly the finance minister and the finance ministry has been found in default on various counts. It's a different matter altogether whether the government now does not wish to abide by what the JPC has found. That's a different question. The government has now agreed, I think, to declare this ATR as an interim report. Um, what more do you want? I <laughs> know. I think your question really begs the question. It's not a question of what more I want. Uh, the very fact that the government call is ready now to call it an interim report. Why? Do they find anything wrong with it? Some deficiencies in it? How is it interim if it was an action taken? 
action taken report on the joint parliamentary committee so how is in what session fashion is it interim and as i said at the beginning i i think it would be adding insult upon injury if you now attempted to answer the problem by saying we'll engage in a few cosmetic changes what we earlier called an action taken report we now call an interim report please be satisfied i don't think the indian parliament uh, indian parliament has been inhabited by infants to whom you give a lollipop and so they'd be satisfied very uh, the suggestion itself is very un unsatisfactory well i mean there is a perception that the opposition is now politicizing the issue you have no issue to go to you know to the people mm. with uh, the assembly elections are around the corner what mm. is your comment on that i think to the extent that the parliament any parliament or any elected legislator is a political body it is not a charity this is not a dharma sansthan uh parliament this is elect elected legislatures anywhere in the anywhere in the world are really uh, political organisms therefore to point a finger at such political organisms and say you are now politicizing an issue as if that were some kind of great original sin uh, is i'm afraid very misplaced secondly when you suggest that we by which you mean the collectivity of the opposition have no issue to go to the people with are you really not uh, somewhat over optimistically prejudging the situation uh, the greatest single issue really before the indian people is the plight of this government and the rampant corruption in the country and if the if the elected members of the opposition bring this out highlight it i don't think they're doing it wrong but why don't you fight within the system why don't you go into the lok sabha and rajya sabha and fight and why do you go outside parliament and take the fight outside on the streets yeah. but that too is a fair question and uh, it's because if the system when you say within the system you're talking of the presence of the parliament why don't you go inside the parliament and do this because we have found through very sad experience that what is called within the system has now stopped addressing itself to redressing the grievances of the elected members one of the functions of a parliament is to address itself to the burning grievances of the nation of the day of the burning grievances of the day of the country which are articulated through the mm, parliamentarians if this grievance redressal mechanism clogs up becomes unanswering insensitive what do you do so many debates have taken place in the parliament the government uh, engages in the empty exercise of debating at the end of it nothing the prime minister gave an assurance on the issue of bofors another very big and continuing corruption case i will personally look into it on a day to day basis and report to the parliament he is yet to report to the parliament and that was 2 years old the assurance so if the system becomes unanswering does not answer unresponsive what is we are, what are we left with we have to do it so you mean you have no longer any faith in parliamentary democracy i think on the contrary on the contrary we have no faith in this government we have no faith in this government's subscription to parliamentary democracy we have no faith really in this government's bona fides when it comes to fighting corruption but you don't think it's a colossal waste of money of the people that you know they have sent you to parliament and you're supposed to fight in the floor of the house and i don't think so I think you're oversimplifying it. I don't think this issue can be reduced to rupees, annas, and pies. Uh, the colossal waste is being caused by the government's attitude, uh, and I, I think a, a, a real purpose is being served uh, about raising the consciousness uh, about what this government is doing. 
So are you going to be rigid and there's going to be an impasse which cannot be solved? I think th this is very much a question that you should address to the Treasury benches. Uh, if the Treasury benches recognize the great wrong that they have done and do not continue to heap greater wrongs, the issue is resolved in a trice. Good luck to you, and I hope you continue your fight and you win. Thank, Thank you very you. much. <laughs>